Good day, students. In this group, we're going to be going over how to use the rational roots theorem and also the fundamental theorem of algebra to uh, factor and solve uh, polynomial um, equations. Okay. So the instructions for each problem that we're going to uh, consider, the one problem we're going to consider today, um, are as follows. So for each given function, we're going to use the corollary to the fundamental theorem of algebra to state the maximum number of complex roots, real roots, or intercepts, and turns. Okay, for the for the graph of the function, and then we're going to use the rational roots theorem to list all the possible rational roots or zeros, and then um, we're going to in part C write the polynomial as a product of linear factors and find all the zeros. And then lastly, in part D, we're going to sketch a graph of the function. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at example one. So for example one, we are considering um, the uh, polynomial equation x to the third minus 7x squared plus 7x plus 15 equals 0. Okay? All right. So for part one, we are going to use the correlation to the fundamental theorem of algebra to state the maximum number of roots, complex roots. So what, are the max, what is the maximum uh, number of complex roots? Well, the maximum number of complex roots is equal to the degree of the polynomial function. Okay, so the degree is three, so you can have a maximum of three complex roots. Okay, so how many um, real roots can it have? The maximum number of real roots. Well, how about if it has three complex roots and none of them are imaginary? That means all of them are going to be real. So. The degree also tells you the maximum number of real roots um, that the function has. So the degree is three, so the maximum number of real roots is three also. Okay? So to give you a visual uh, representation, we have a cubic function that looks like this. Okay? If the x-axis were down here, we see that we have one real root. Okay? If the x-axis where like this, in this case, we have three distinct real roots, okay? And then if the x-axis were something like this, we have two distinct real roots. You have a double root here, and then you have another root here, okay? So the question is, what is the maximum number of roots you could possibly have for this cubic function? So we can have two, you can have one, two, three, or you can simply have one. So you see that, um, the number, the maximum number of real roots that you can have is three. And that happens when you have a situation, this case in the center where the x-axis goes through the graph three times, okay? All right, so we have that. Now, maximum number of turns, maximum number of turns or changes in direction is, they, is always one unit is always a unit less than the maximum number of complex roots or one unit less than the degree. So the degree is three, so the maximum number of turns is two, okay? So as you can see here, this is the first turn right here and then this is the second turn. So you look at the degree, subtract one from the degree that tells you the maximum uh, number of, of turns or changes in direction for the graph of the function. All right, so for um, this about to be part A, now for the B part, oh, actually, let me change that. That's number one, and this is part A. All right, so for the B part, we just list all possible rational roots, okay? So we're looking for the possible um, rational roots. All right, we're going to be using the, uh, the um, rational roots theorem here. So in order to, according to the rational roots theorem, if p over q um, is a is a root, okay, then uh, p is a uh, factor of the last term is a factor um, of the last term. And uh, Q is a factor um, of the first term. Okay, so that's basically what the um, 
uh, rational risk theorem tells us, okay? All right, so um, to find a list of all possible rational roots, what we're going to do is we're going to list the possible values of P and Q and generate a um, list of numbers that uh, are possible rational roots to satisfy the rational roots theorem. Okay, so to do that, all we'll just simply do is we're going to um, so let make a make a following list of so possible rational roots, possible um, rational roots. R plus or minus uh, factors of the last term, factors of um, last term. Remember, the last term goes on top, divided by, uh, divided by um, plus or minus factors of first term, factors of the first term. Okay, so in this problem that we're dealing with right here, the last term is 15 and the first term is 1. We're looking at the coefficients of the first term and then the last term is a constant. So how do we apply that to this problem? To this problem, we are, the possible rational roots are going to be plus or minus factors of 15 divided by um, plus or minus factors of 1. Okay, so what are the factors of 15? First, we're going to consider positive and negative factors. Okay, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 15. Alright, what are the possible factors of 1? Possible factors of 1 are simply plus or minus 1, okay? So to generate the list of possible um, rational roots, we're just going to be generating pairs by taking a, a term from the top and combining it with a term in the denominator. So we're going to pair this, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1, and then 3 and 1, and then 5 and plus or minus 1, and then 15 and plus or minus 1. All right, so we're going to generate multiple numbers by taking one from the top and then one from the bottom and then combining them, okay? So our choices are going to be plus or minus one over plus or minus one, pairing these two together, plus or minus three over plus or minus one, pairing these two together, plus or minus five and plus or minus one, pairing these two together, and then plus or minus 15 over plus or minus one. When we reduce it, we're going to have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 15. Okay? So these are the possible rational roots. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 of them. All right? Okay. Now let's shift gears and go to part C, where to list, uh, write the polynomial of a product of linear factors. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have to apply synthetic division to the original problem, x to the third minus 7x squared plus 7x, using these possible rational roots as terms that we're going to divide by. Okay, so there goes the original function. Uh, to get it prepped for synthetic division, we're just going to extract coefficients. Okay, and then we'll apply synthetic division to, to the numbers that we get. All right, so what are the coefficients that we're going to use for synthetic division? This has no number in front, so it's going to be a 1, negative 7, 7, and then 15. Okay, so let's put it in here. We have 1, negative 7, positive 7, and then 15. All right, so we're going to be we are going to test all the, all the eight numbers to see which one works. Okay, whichever one works, that will help us reduce this third degree uh, polynomial to a second degree polynomial, and then we can factor using other methods, okay? So how about we start off trying negative 1, all right? So the process for synthetic division, you add downwards and multiply across. Repeat this process over and over again until you get to the last column. All right, so there's no number under the 1, so that could be represented by 0 because 0 is, has no magnitude. So we're going to add down first. 1 plus 0 is 1 and then multiply across. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. 
Add down negative 8. Multiply across negative 1 times negative 8 is 8. Add down 15. Negative 1 times 15 is negative 15. Add down 0. Okay, so we can clearly see that um, uh, we see that negative 1 works because you ended up with no remainder. So this is, in fact, a rational root. If it's a rational root, you end up with no remainder. Okay, so let's express this uh, 2 as a product of each other. So the original function can be written as x. You do the opposite of this rational root right here, plus 1. Now let's write a depressed polynomial using this coefficients x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, now let's go ahead and factor this other piece. We know um, we could use the this rational root theorem here again to factor it, but uh, is there an easier way to, to do it is a question. Do we have to resort, always resort to using synthetic division to factor? And the answer is no. We can factor this piece using the x game. Right, so let's use the AC method to factor this. So in this problem, AC is uh, 15 and then B is negative 8. The two numbers that work are negative 3 and negative 5. So let's put it in. We have, um, let's just factor this piece right here. We have x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 15. All right, so break it down the center and factor by grouping right behind this, in front of the sign right there. So from the first two, I take out an x, so we have x minus three. And then from the next two, I take out negative five, and I'm left with x minus three. And then if we factor by grouping, we have x minus three times x minus five. Let's bring down the other factor times x plus one. Okay, so the product, um, in as a linear factor, the original problem can be written as x plus one, times x minus 3 times x minus 5 equals 0. So this is written, writing the original problem as a product of linear factors. All right, so that's how you write it. Now, next thing we're going to do is find the zeros. So how do we find the zeros? We use the zero product property, apply that to these uh, factors. So to do that, we're going to set each factor to 0, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and then x minus 5 equals 0. If you solve them and order them, you're going to have x equals, um, let's see, this one, this one is going to be negative 1, and then when I solve this, I get 3, and then when I solve that, I get positive 5. So these are your zeros, zeros or roots, okay? All right, now, um, what we're going to do next is, uh, graph. We're going to sketch a graph of the situation. Okay, so since we have a positive cubic, what's going to happen is that we're going to be going from the um, bottom left to the top upper right. Okay, from quadrant uh, three to quadrant number one. All right. So remember, if your cubic is positive, or you have if you have an odd function, it always starts from the left and up like that. If it's positive. And then if it's negative, it goes in the other direction. Okay? So this is a, a situation we're going to be looking at. So let's go ahead and graph it. So all we do is graph the roots. So the roots are, this is my y-axis, this is my x-axis. The roots are negative 1. So we have one intersection there, negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, 3, and then 5, 4, 5. Okay, so we're going to draw a graph of a cubic that has two terms, as indicated earlier, and it goes through these points. This is just a sketch, it's not nothing perfect, so it's going to look something like goes through this one, and then up, and then turns around, through that, and then through there, and it should stop. Okay, so this is just a sketch um, of a possible sketch of the situation, okay? If you take a look at this graph, you notice you have two turns, as indicated earlier, and three um, complex roots, which are all real roots, okay? So there goes the graph um, of the situation. 
So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel uh, for other for updates and other cool clips such as this. You can post a comment to let me know what you think about this clip. Or also click like if you liked it. Also feel free to share this clip with your friends and you buy a social networking program. More clips can find Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.